watching us from my name is Alex your host with the mostest thank you for tuning into Uganda at Crossroads where we talk about the daily events that happen in Uganda each and every week now this week has been you know less eventful but nonetheless entertaining nonetheless educative nonetheless eye-opening and we've seen so many things that have been happening these last few days uh, I mean we laughed we have cried we have felt with you guys we have we have gone on this journey that all Ugandans go on and you know we, we have been learning we've been uh, rejoicing and doing all these things so um, wherever you're watching us from I want to thank you again for your continued support for your again uh, you're gonna crossroads show as well as our other shows on campfire TV we do have uh, love sex and money that just uh, finished earlier on we also have uh, divine moments uh, of great substance with our pastor in house uh, Joy Bill Tampa we also have the campfire talk show that's hosted by me and the diaspora talk show hosted by me so again guys for your continued support thank you thank you thank you thank you we want to wish you happy happy holidays wherever you are we hope you guys are safe we hope you guys are enjoying yourself but you know uh, taking precautions wherever you're going uh, we know holidays in Uganda are pretty pretty big uh, events you guys do the most as most Ugandans are but please drink responsibly drive responsibly if you're drunk get someone else to drive you again if you can avoid a boat cruise please do so. We don't want a repeat of that. And I mean that in the best of ways. Avoid any boat cruise unless there is, again, if you're taking safety fast, safety fast. So let's jump in into what happened this weekend. A lot happened, but before we go into that, I'm going to you know, ask my co-guests to introduce themselves, say hello to you guys, and you know, you know, wish you the best of holidays, all that good stuff. And again, if you're wherever you're watching us from, please don't forget to go on uh, our Facebook page, like the page, share the page with everybody and encourage them to like and follow us as well so it's that life mtv live and also go to the campfire talk show page as well and feel free to follow any of these guys on facebook we have sarah Wakanansa, we have hillary we have shakira we also have alex nakato so you can always follow us on our personal pages leave us your comments um advice anything you want to see change any topics you want us to talk about so uh, with that being said let me give these guys a chance to say hello to you guys and let's jump into what happened in uganda this week guys thank you. <laughs> it's always good to see you <laughs> so i'm going to give you a chance to introduce yourself and say hello to you guys who are just watching uh wherever they're watching first all right, uh, thank you so much, uh, moderator. I'm exceedingly honored and humbled to be here always on our program, Uganda at Crossroads. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to say Merry Christmas to all Ugandans and also uh, other viewers from the different parts of the world. As the year is coming to an end, I would like also to say uh, Happy Holidays for those who do not uh, celebrate Christmas. And I would like also to say that uh, we are standing strong as uh, young tads who want to bring change in our country. We think about all the political prisoners uh, like Dr. Stella Nyanzi, who is still in Zilla prison. Uh, we are standing with you. Uh, all political prisoners in all the parts of our country, Uganda, we are standing with you. And uh, come next year, 2019, I believe it's going to be a year of action. We are going to get the fundamental change that we would like to see in the world. Uh, my name is Seguia Hillary Innocent Taylor, and I'm looking forward to interacting with my colleagues in the studio tonight. Thank you. All right, Sarah, one and only. One and only, Sarah Joy. Good evening, um, our viewers from the East and West Coast, I think. And then our viewers are viewing us from Africa, Uganda. It's been quite an interesting week. We've just, uh, before we aired, we've just been laughing 
at how crazy <laughs> things are happening every day. But it's, it's always fun. And a happy new year to, happy Merry Christmas. Um, it's been quite an uneventful year, so much has happened. But um, we are coming to the birth of Jesus Christ, so I believe everyone is going to lighten up. The mood is going to be different. And um, happy new year. We have just a few days left to the new year. To the new year, 2019. So, so we hope uh, 2019 is going to be better with uh, new ideas, new things, new events. We're still going to be here because uh, every week, every day, new something things, new. Are, something new unfolds. And uh, right. we'll be here to break it down. Okay. <laughs> For everyone who has just tuned in, this is, uh, I'm going to get my technical team to just cut down on the feedback. Uh, guys, if you've just tuned in, this is Uganda at Crossroads where we talk about all those current events that are happening in Uganda. I have my team of analysts, all you know, hum uh, human rights activists as well. They, I bring in different guests every week just to talk to you in regards to whatever is happening in Uganda and around the world and all those events that affect Uganda internationally and uh, back at home. So let's jump into all these topics that made the news and you know, made you guys think twice of what's happening in Uganda, talk about all these guys. Um, one and first and foremost, I think this is the topic that everyone is talking about. It's on every social media page, everyone is talking about it. So, our very dear, honored, comedic, honorable MP Karoro Guama fights in uh, fought on a show that was uh, that was uh, aired on Spark TV. Um, he beat up a promoter called I think Andrew Bajo. I'm not sure where he was from, but he slapped him on screen and he pushed the table like this. This is. This is, these are actions that are not made by someone you think is in parliament. Like, by the time you wear that suit, by the time you wear that title, there are certain things you should not be doing anymore. And this is something that we have seen um, a lot of things happening, Remember, even with the fight that broke out in parliament last time. I mean, they crossed some lines. They should have known better that they are honorable MPs, the people have voted them and to represent them, but you know, the behavior was uncalled for. So, again, we see Katolo Wama bringing back, you know, showing us some skills that he has. He broke into a fight. So I'm going to just give you guys a chance to tell me what are the procedures that government allows. Is it something that this, is this, can this be allowed to happen? What are the repercussions of something that he did like this on national TV, on social media? It has been everywhere. Oh. It's a representation of Uganda. As if we could not have, a, uh, our reputation out there is shaky at most. So... What are the repercussions of this fight breaking out? And tell me what happened. Give me a breakdown of what happened. Since Sarah, this is a, a topic you brought on and we all did know about it. I'm going to give you a lead on this and then Hillary can always break down the repercussions of what this implies. Um, it was, uh, literally, it was funny and interesting. When I watched, because I was watching live, mm -hmm. uh, Corner, and I burst out and laughed like crazy. <laughs> it was really funny and interesting. Mm -hmm. But um, the promoter, Bajo, had... A, a really strong issue that um, at, at some point Katolo uh, Wama uh, got offended because uh, the promoter said the issue why Katolo Wama was quiet is because he can't express himself in English. But as an artist it, it, and you are at a legislature, you're in parliament, I think it's paramount for your voice to be heard as if, even if you're not opposing. Because I remember some years back, Katol Wama almost lost his, uh, they broke down his theater. That was uh, Royal Theater. Mm. And um, he's, he's an artist. He lost property. And um, you expect other artists to come out and stand with you in such things because this is going to affect so many people. And uh, so many things. As an artist, there is some time back where people had to go into a drive to contribute money for his heart surgery. So... So many people, when you're, in, um, when you're in such field, you need to be really, really sensitive to the things you say. So I think the, the challenge came in when, uh, when uh, Bajo tested him and said he, he couldn't, um, he was so quiet. And other legislatures like um, Sewungu, like, um, like, there were a number of guys who were in parliament fighting for the rights of Bobby Wine. Bobby Wine is a musician. Mm despite going to parliament. He has been singing from his early 20s. So despite being an MP, he earns money for music, because for sure their salary is not going to be their money That's for their personal them. use. Mm -hmm. The money they are given as salary is supposed to do work in their constituencies. So that's why it's important for every member of parliament to have a side job so that they do not depend on the money they are paid in parliament to meet their personal needs. Sure. So, I think it is paramount and it's just very okay for him to be able to keep his job 
if you want him to do the services or the duties of an MP very effectively. So, and, and I think Bajo was trying to explain to him that uh, you being a musician, be, you being, because Katerwama is a musician, is an actor, he's so many things. It is very shameful for you to be quiet. But then where I think uh, things got, got heated was why he said, I, I know very well, maybe because you can't express. Yeah, issue. English is an issue because in Parliament, on the floor of Parliament, you have to debate in English. And since it's not your, really, you don't have a good command of expression. <laughs> And I told him he became so emotional. But I'll go here. What I'll say is, Katol uh, first is an a legislature. Two, he's uh, mature enough. Three, is um, he's, um, he's, he's an actor. In acting, you are trained about controlling emotions. Emotions, yeah. He would, as much as, okay, let's take away being a member of parliament. Let's take away him being a human being. Mm. In acting, and for the time he has spent acting, he should know that they are told to control emotions. That's why people go, get, a movie comes out and you're like, someone gets so emotional in a movie and they cry and you're like, they make it look so real, they make it look so unreal. So he would have restrained himself. But then, he, he, but he also got attacked. I, mean, I feel for him because I think that's a, that's a weakness he knows he has, and it, right now it's too no. Late. But I, but you see what he got attacked because I saw him. That's not an attack. I saw a budget telling him, yes, but you know someone's weakness, and you're calling him out. Alex, and let's being, not let's not confuse I saw, I the think truth. He was, he was, no, no. He was under attack. Then. You see, one thing I've seen with many Ugandans, mm -hmm. when someone tells you the truth, then they're attacking you or abusing you. That's why people they confuse. There's a way they twist the truth. For being an abuse. I think the truth must have been delivered in a better way, right? No, if I tell, for example, if you tell, for example, if you tell, Hillary, if you tell like, Hillary, hey, this shirt is not nice. It's like, like that's, at least Hillary, Hillary gets the point. But then I think the way the Hillary came out was Hillary is going to interpret. that shirt is not nice, but which is okay. it? What, what is it? it? I think it well, was um, the tonation. I know no, the tonation wasn't right, mm. Mm -hmm. but I would expect Katolu Wama to restrain himself. The tonation, but I will tell you one thing. Katolu Wama himself has not been using the right tonation for a long time. I remember beginning of the year when he attacked Fik Famaika, who had just joined the industry with one, two songs. And he is like, oh, these boys who have just joined the industry. I'm like, you've been here for a long time. Why, are you, why don't you let Fik Famaika shine? He had an opinion on the flop of Fik Famaika. He said, oh, these young boys, Fik Famaika did not, he got it, enough people. They for a starter, <laughs> he did not flop. But as Katol Wama, why are you reminding us uh, Fik Famaika flopped or he didn't get enough people? So Katol Wama has not really been a good example. Also, he has been attacking other artists, mm. especially young upcoming artists. His opinion, he should always keep it to himself, especially when it comes to this. Because first of all, for them, they've been in the industry. They've tested the waters. It was tough for them in the beginning. True. So they should respect these young boys. It's not, Fik Famaika used to work in a winner market. Some friend of mine told me a story. He used to sell clothes to my friend's boyfriend, and the boyfriend was an artist. Wow. He was already at Anfik Famaika right now. Mm. He's an artist bigger than the guy he used to sell to clothes. You, you know? So Fik Famaika has, has really, really done a good job. He's That's done a good job. So for you to come and put him down, it, it doesn't make any sense. So I think uh, Kama is just a bitch that uh, Kama this time. Uh, really started bitching around to Katolu Wama and he didn't like it. For me, I still insist he would have controlled his emotions. He's an artist, he's a legislature. Let me tell you one thing. That bullshit can happen in Uganda. If that had happened in the Western world, as I speak today, Katolu Wama, he would have been out of parliament. Out of Not even that. suspension. Mm. He would have been completely, let that bullshit happen in the Senate here mm. or in the House. You'll be out. First of all, you will be out. Not even an apology would save you. You'll be completely You'll be out. asked to resign, asked to be You'll be asked to resign. Yeah. You'll be asked to resign because there are certain behaviors that cannot be contained. Like violence. Violence is a big thing. Sure. As a big man, Katol Wama maybe is in his 50s or something. I would expect him to... Because let me ask you one thing. Katol Wama has a heart problem. What if but you retaliated and, and hit him with a, a big blow? You would have Katolu Wama dying, you know, you know on, studio, on, on in the show. studio, on, show, a, flow, on a live is, show, yeah. and Katolu Wama is dead. So already himself has a problem. He has a heart problem. So Where are you fighting? Uh, let me ask let you this. I'm going to ask you, Hillary, this. I'm going to ask you this before you continue. Uh, I mean, I have someone saying, uh, David Lubua is saying, I like the articulations here, but my problem is, should you only vote for those who speak English but can't reason? Um, 
yes, the, the whole thing, that he shouldn't have fought. That yeah. is well, well and good. But now I'm, trying to, I'm going to go back to the fact that half the MPs we have in parliament are not as articulate. Yeah. They're on the same level of Katolo yeah. Mwama. And that, uh, that in itself represents the fact that Uganda literally runs along those lines. You're going to have half the people who have who have learned, who have had a chance of going to good schools, and half the other nation are people who can express themselves, but they can't, they don't have a grasp of the English language. So, what are we going to do? So, what do you, what do you foresee the, the elections being like, given the fact that we have had Katolu Wam as a representative, we, now we have all these MPs coming out saying all these words, these big, big words that they're trying to, you know, use from the Webster dictionary, and they can't find them what they need. Yeah, that's, that's what are we going to do for 2021? That's, that's something very simple. Uh, I think as, as Ugandans, we have to, first of all, um, accept that uh, English is vernacular to us because it's, it's a foreign language. So if, had it been that uh, we didn't get uh, colonized in the, in, in the 70s or 60s, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't be speaking English. But again, uh, we have our native languages. So if you are in, in the central and you're speaking Luganda, or you're in the east, you're speaking Lusoga, or you're in the in north, you're speaking, uh, you know, Lugbar, or name it, in the west, you're speaking of Nyankore, I think um, we should look at English as uh, a foreign language. And we, I, 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 will, I will, you know, not rush into uh, judging someone, you know, failing to speak a foreign language. If someone can express uh, himself or herself in their native languages and they pass out the message clearly, then I think um, that would be, to be the best main of, you know, uh, means of uh, conveying the message to uh, any person in our country. If you look at countries like South Africa, uh, they are allowed to speak the Zulu in their parliament. So you can look at uh, people like uh, legislators like um, uh, this guy who, who puts on... Uh, the red cap, what's Mal Julius Malema. Malema. Yes, when he's speaking, uh, you'll hear him using also some Zulu. Mm -hmm. If you go to Kenya still, you're going to hear some Kiswahili in their parliament. So uh, they are embracing uh, their identity, which is uh, their local languages. So I think uh, as Uganda being the fact that we are part of the East African community, I think it's one thing we should also try to embrace to enable each and everyone to, uh, you know, be able to express out their views in their the easiest language, language that, that can, because we can be understood by each and everyone. Say, you but again, uh, your if you look at also countries like, um, you know, if, if you go to the West or like Nigeria, mm. you're going to hear them using maybe like their uh, Yoruba language. Mm. So uh, if you Yoruba, you speak some, some Yoruba. They can use also Pigeon English. So uh, for me, uh, look at issues like, for people are blaming Katolu Wama. Okay, yes, I'll blame him like Sarah's did because I agree with Sarah. Yeah, Katolu Wama, as a leader, he has anger management, a, a challenge of anger management. So his temperament was uncalled for. Mm -hmm. As a leader, whereby people are looking at you to be exemplary, and you're behaving in such an uncouth manner before uh, the, the entire population watching you on national television. So I think it was uh, so absurd, and I expect him to come out and apologize to all the Ugandans who are watching this. Because the young generation, when they're looking at him like that, and he's expressing himself in such a way, yet they had they high hopes in him. Them. As someone who's sitting in our parliament, you can't express yourself in such a manner. So, um, and again, I also up, uh, upload uh, this, this young man, uh, the promoter, Bajo, because we have to speak up each and every time. Uh, yeah. Always uh, put pressure on our legislators. If they are dormant in parliament, challenge yeah. them. So get opportunities like this. They, when they come to national uh, televisions and they, they have, they've come for debates or any conversations, always challenge them. What are you doing in parliament? Why are you silent in parliament? What can we do? Because we want, we want way, uh, you know, ways uh, that are gonna uh, help us move forward. So. If we keep silent, then we shall say uh, we shall be, you know, uh, promoting idol, idolers in our parliament. Yeah. So as Eddie, Ken Eddie Kenzo says in his song, uh, Miulenge, these are some of the Miulenges that Eddie Kenzo was singing about. Why do you go to parliament to be a puppet? Why do you just keep silent about it? If all parliamentarians were concerned about a one parliamentarian who is being, uh, you know, uh, and some of them were from the ruling party. Surprising. Right. <laughs> Some of them were NRM. Who exactly. Was saying, 
If Feelings, you look at uh, yeah. the, the minister of, of, of the youth, uh, mm -hmm. that lady, uh, she was speaking out. And she was like, uh, why can't you leave Wobi Wine to be free? Because in parliament today we have uh, legislators who are accountants, legislators lawyers. who are consultants, lawyers, yes. They're doing their side businesses. But again, for you as parla uh, for you as the government to oppress only one Bobby Wine, you look at as a threat to uh, our country and you oppress him to the fact that he can't do his business. Because Bobby Wine is employing lots of Ugandans in his business. Yeah. So, you, you, in other words, you are, uh, you know, you are putting uh, lives of very many Ugandans at stake. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the middlemen, mainly like the promoters or people who are putting up banners or people who are printing t-shirts, people who are going to do business. Mm -hmm. Like during concerts, you find people who are doing petty businesses. I'm selling uh, chewing gum, I'm selling chicken, yeah. I'm selling pork, I'm selling beef, I'm selling sausages. So all those who have, you know, are small businesses are going to be affected at the end of the day. And we have a very big problem in our country of unemployment. So if the issue of unemployment in our country is at 67.8% and the government is trying to fight someone who's trying to provide employment opportunities, then there is a problem in our country. Yeah. So oh. for a leader like Katolu Wama, I think is a disaster in our parliament and that promoter Bajo did a very great job. I've seen people who are blaming him that he was uh, he went too far, but he didn't go any far. I think he went a little uh, too far. He crossed it's, the line where it's it was, always it was good a for us to put them on pressure. They it, have to account. Pressure. They have to pressure, account. I think if we have seen leaders, if who I'm going to call you out, Hillary, if I'm going <laughs> to call you out, knowing that we are on a, on a show, we are on a show. We are we are we are present to thousands of people who are watching us. Okay. I watched this video on Kakensa and on, on, oh. on YouTube. It has over 30,000 people watching. Yes, but I see. see no, but, but, but Alex, Alex, Alex you're forgetting one. But, but, but look, 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 at, look, at, look at this country. We're in the U.S. Look at Donald Trump. The way the liberal media is you know, try, trying to portray Donald Trump in a bad image. If Donald Trump would lose his tem temperament, maybe he would kill people. Look yeah. at the way the opposition is trying to also talk here about Mr. Museveni. But that would have been so true. If Mr. Museveni, if, 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 if the well, president... Kept his was, no, 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 look at the issue of uh, President this, Museveni. Because we, call him, we call him a dictator. Yeah. Mm. Because if, we, if that guy was also having the, the temperament of Katolo Obama, we would be dead by now, all of us. So my but question again, to you guys... He is, he is taking it as in a positive way. So at times we have to accept that positive what criticism. was doing... So, <laughs> Sorry. Bajo was just being like any other Ugandan outside there, yeah. questioning his member of parliament. Right. That when do you raise your voice when us, who sent you to parliament, yeah. need you to speak up? Exactly. It's one of those <laughs> things. Katolu Wama is an artist. Bobby Wine may not be a member of his constituency, but right. he's an artist. I have just told you, Katolu Wama, when his theater was being taken away, he expected all these other artists to come up and stand up, and they did. They yes. raised their voices. Exactly. So Katolu Wama, being an artist and being in parliament, it's like being in parliament and you a lawyer, and you see other the lawyers being, uh, being persecuted. <laughs> lawyers are going to come up. Being an artist, we would expect better from him. But uh, his statement he made, he said, what do you want me to tell Bobby Wine? So... What, 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 that statement was really vague. Bobby Wine, at, at the time when he's fighting for his career, mm -hmm. at least be, let's see you among the rest. Because this yeah. was not an issue whether you're NRM or position independent. Yeah. This was an issue because today they are stopping Bobby Wine to sing. What if tomorrow they come up and say, Law, if you're in parliament and you're a lawyer, you're not supposed to practice? Mm -hmm. Because you've seen um, lawyers in parliament yeah, like, fighting uh, government. Odonga Oto is, is a lawyer and yeah. he's practicing. He's practi no, they're fighting government. <laughs> he, he has been recently, like the lawyer of the Recently, speaker. Um, members of some of the lawyers have taken, have taken up cases and won over government. The Tojikwata Co has been taken to the high court. And these are lawyers in parliament. Exactly. Same Gona. Yes, these are Gona. lawyers that are, some of those lawyers are lawyers that are on, um, on the, on the, on the, on the <laughs> yeah. These are lawyers on the treason cases for these uh, Bobby Wine and the rest. These are lawyers. What if tomorrow they come up and say, lawyers, mm -hmm. we are, you're not practicing. So yeah. as Katolo Bwama, for sure the truth is, is very dumb. So this is my question yes. to both of you, because you have, you have seen, these are events that are repeating themselves. One, we had, uh, what do you think the repercussions are going to be? What, are the, what is the immediate repercussion of him fighting on social on 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 on, on, a, on a show that's been broadcast to thousands of people outside Uganda, even in Uganda itself? Well, what is going the, to be the immediate the, the, repercussion? The parliamentary. And, uh, uh, give me a second. And if we're going to if we're going to persecute Katolwama for fighting on, on in the on, on TV, hmm. 
Why did we not persecute the many MPs who fought during the whole Tojikwata Court situation? No, they were. They, what was the idea? This, this, this was because this is what happened. If we're going to, we're going to, uh, mm. we're going to do something to to Katoro Wama, the same needs to be done for. So I need to see how that is to yes. there, there, there is no case here for, 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 for persecuting the, Katoro no. Wama. What Baju can do, maybe he has to seek justice. That was an assault. So yeah. for I I I I, no, I, no, I encourage I, enc I encourage <laughs> I encourage a promoter Baju to to drag Katoro to courts of law to seek yeah. justice mm. because you can't assault me in front of the national television and I keep silent. So I have to seek justice at the end of the day. And also the parliamentary committee on ethics has to intervene and they put Katoro Wama in order because once they keep silent then this trend is going to go ahead. It's going to happen. Lots of uh, parliamentarians are going to do the same, uh, the same behavior. But, uh, but uh, so, you see what happened in parliament? Yeah. The, the MPs that were involved in the fracas yeah. were banned from sitting mm -hmm. for about maybe three, four seats, if you yeah. remember. Right. They, they, the speaker told them they were not supposed to sit for some, um, they were suspended from the house for some time. But uh, this was happening in the house. Uh, but uh, the second time it happened, they were evaded. Yeah. You know, when the yeah. army comes, uh, they were invented, and as we speak, numbers is still in a wheelchair. They were invented, they were beaten. You fight to save yourself. They, right. If they were not, this was not just a member of parliament just for fighting and boxing. This yeah, is the army yeah, coming yeah, no, into parliament totally with different. guns. Uh, and they were beating. trying to rape our constitution exactly. and they had to do whatever the constitution They had to do whatever they had to do to protect it. It wasn't yeah. good. It wasn't a good image to, to, yeah. to show worldwide. It was bad and they penalized but, but, them. But I don't blame them for fighting for themselves because these people had guns. As we speak, Namboza is in a wheelchair as a result of that. So, but this was... Uh, this was someone checking out, I don't know if Bajo is from Lubaga, this was someone checking out his member of parliament and saying, you are dormant on the issues of national importance. Because as much as, leave alone even Bobby Wine and politics, just like he said, Bobby Wine employs so many Ugandans. Mm. So many Ugandans depend. And all those people, these promoters pay taxes, you know that. Yeah. I want to take a chance to just read uh, your comments. Everyone who's watching us online, thank you so much. It seems like the issue with Katoro Wama is very, very heated because all of you guys are giving me a lot of input. Uh, Joweria N. Kalundi is saying anger management is needed. Uh, Waspa Hassan is saying Katoro was right somehow. Uh, same here, I think that's what. Um, Nam uh, Mumpa Aaron is saying Bajo was 100% right to say what he wants because it's our work and responsibility to put pressure on the government, on, on, on uh, put pressure because we are their bosses. Uh, the parliament was invaded, so MPs were debating themselves, which is what Sarah has just been saying. And then and Nalu Vega Rose is saying, I'm listening, but Sebo Nebanyabo. For me to embossed. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Nalu Vega Rose, thank you so much for the love. Continue to share the page with someone you think might want to actually be a part of this conversation. Also, like us on Facebook. Go to Life MTV Live to watch all our shows. So many interesting shows keep uh, keep going on during the day on Saturday. Saturday is our biggest day ever. Um, we are wishing you guys happy holidays wherever you are. Be safe. Well, let's continue this conversation. Oh, Alex, uh, Ellen Prezo, you're saying, Alex, we can't compare. Uh, let me see. We can't compare MPs with defended themselves from intruders who attacked them in parliament during the constitutional amendment to Katolu Wama fighting on national TV. That is hard and understood. Um, and then we should also have Miss, uh, I'm not going to read your name, but I'm saying uh, Tamana Minuni did a similar thing on NBS TV while being hosted by Simon Muyanga Lutaya. So I guess I missed that fight, but I'll go look for it again. Um, we're going to skip this topic because it seems to be something that's going to continue going on. We're but, not continuing but, 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 on be, Before you switch up and go to something else, this is what I want to say to mm. the people of Lubaga. Okay. 2021, keep Kato, if Kato ever comes back, keep Kato out of parliament. Kato, you don't need the lots of Katolu Wama in Parliament. Mm. Because as, as much because as... Because you should be a bit, a bit more vigilant. Huh? No, Katolu Wama is... Uh, if you look at members of Parliament who, who have uh, fought for the rights, who have done exactly why they went to Parliament, when it came to the Rodukwata Court, they were given five million. Other members of Parliament they put back, brought back the money because they didn't need it. He said he, was, he went to Parliament to look after, to take to care eat. of himself, <laughs> to eat. So, people of Lubanga, if you bring back someone like Katolu Wama to parliament, it is entirely on you. People like Katolu Wama don't need to be in parliament. Let him, let him collect whatever he has to collect right now, enrich himself, and uh, please take him back to the theater. He needs to be acting. He's a comedian. 
he needs to be <laughs> yeah he needs to be acting he needs to be doing comedy mm. he needs to be doing plays he doesn't deserve to be in parliament yeah and Sarah, to add on what you've said i think also this is a lesson to all uh, our legislators i think they should learn uh, more from the mistakes of katoro wama so that we don't see uh, other yeah. events uh, like the same happening again because it, it will be a shame to our parliament so let them know that uh, being a honorable member, that's a title, a very big title that they are, they are holding. Mm -hmm. And it so doesn't work they, they only in Parliament, carry even outside in Ireland. each and every corner of our country uh, that they're going to, even, even right. if it's out of our country. So it's a very big challenge to I'll have tell you one thing. I don't like President Museveni on so many levels, on so many things, especially how you, he has drained the country and put it in a ditch. But uh, he's very good at... Uh, at controlling like anger himself. management. Exactly. Uh, yeah. He and, and it I'm off, telling he you, plays it off yeah. and then he, 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 he yes, would. Yes, he's very good at being the right. moral. Yeah. People he were saying that like, if Katoro Wama had a gun, so he would have killed that promoter. He would have shot so many people on TV. Mm -hmm. Just imagine, you saw the scenario with the, with the NBS uh, uh, the, uh, journalists. Yes. The journalists. Yes. If Seven didn't yeah. know how to control his temperament, he would have shot him just straight and we'll see, boom, someone being shot. Yes, on because now, now look at the issue of um, Seven, the way the, the insults like uh, Dr. Steran Yanz has given uh, to his family, his mother mainly, and uh, the guy Steren was Yanz very silent champion. about it. So, okay. Yes, so if, if you read uh, the diction Steran Yanz uses towards the president, it's that the president here is scoring uh, credit, and again, the opposition is losing credit. So I think uh, as people on the opposition part, we have to work better when it comes to this uh, to this. Uh, Position. All right, guys, we're going to jump into our next topic. So this one is this this one is a bit complicated, not complicated, but it has been on everyone's lips. Uh, there have been memes on, on social media. Uh, WhatsApp statuses have been, you know, filled with these pictures of what happened during this week. So we have uh, Miss Africa, uh, Miss Africa contestant winner, Queen Abe, uh, Abe Nacho, I think I always know yeah, how Queen to pronounce Abe Nacho. Abe Nacho came <laughs> back home and had a chance of meeting uh, the, the uh, our president, Mr. Mseveni or Ricardo Mseveni. So, and Mseveni, I think uh, people are calling it Mseveni embarrassed her in regards to the hair that she was putting on and, you know, you know, called her out on it and said you shouldn't be wearing, uh, you shouldn't be wearing, what kind of hair? Indian, he said Indian, Indian hair. hair. You shouldn't be wearing Indian hair. You should be wearing your hair more naturally. So we, we have seen all these pictures of, of, of uh, Queen laugh, you know, crying, bawling in tears. And we have seen all these memes where people are calling her to punch uh, the president, which is so uncalled for. I'm not, don't quote me on that. But... What is your response to what happened, to how this was handled, to how it blew up all of a sudden? Is it that people are just trying to look for ways to shame Museveni, or did this actually really happen, or no, what happened? Yes, it's, 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 it's so strange to see that uh, the president is making such, uh, you know, uh, is uttering out such words or using such, such, such diction. Because uh, before uh, Queen Abinacho left for uh, Miss Universe 2018, you see that uh, she was, uh, you know, giving the situation she went through because she tr tried to raise funds for, uh, yeah, I uh, remember reading yeah, for her uh, air tickets, but uh, it was a struggle because the, uh, the family had to do each and everything possible to ensure that their, their girl uh, represents our country because the government, they went to set house and the government failed to give them finances. So that's how uh, sad, our government works. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go and take them proposals, because someone has come and they're going to raise our flag to the, an international stage, but you're denying them a financial you know, aid to buy an air ticket. How much is, is it costing for an air ticket? Uh, where, where, where was the Miss Universe? Which country was that? Was, was it, in, it in China? Uh, in was it China? Because I think she got South to, America? She got to, she got to China and then it was in No, it was China, I think. Yes, even if it was like China or any, maybe like far away as far as, as Russia, and the government fails to pay for the air ticket or save an accommodation of this young girl. I think it's a very shame. Uh, it's a very big shame to our government. And again, you're waiting for the moment whereby uh, this lady, young lady, who shined at an international level, and she became uh, Miss, Africa. Miss Africa. And then I think she finished in top five. Yeah. So finishing in top five, then you come back with a crown as Miss Africa and your president is ready to welcome you and manipulate you, I think it's a very big shame. This is how Mr. Seven works. He likes manipulating young people each and every time. So today he's going to use you for, your, uh, for his political gains. You see how the Ministry of Tourism was very fast rushing. Yes, we're going to welcome Abinacho at the airport. I mean, such wonder was there. But again, they denied this young girl an opportunity of being uh, our ambassador of uh, our tourism in our country. They gave it to someone else who was, you know, uh, 
who has never done something productive for our country. Mm. So if someone tells you, because uh, it was common sense that Miss Uganda, by, by, by default, she has to be uh, our Miss Tourism, because nobody can promote our country uh, more than our Miss Uganda. But the minister had different interests in different people. That's why they brought, uh, you know, uh, Zari. I don't know if he's still the ambassador or not. But again, back to the sentiments, that, that, to, 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 to the words that were spoken by our president. It was, you know, not called for during that time. Maybe he would say it uh, maybe afterwards. But again, on that very day, whereby this young girl uh, is in front of all national it's televisions, so the cameras. It's so yes, it's her time to shine and enjoy the best moments of her life. And you are embarrassing her. Uh, it, it, was, it wasn't something good. Because you could see in, pic in, the, in the pictures, uh, if, if you could interpret the, the photos very well, like you could see the, uh, some tension the facial expression of uh, Queen Abenacho. She wasn't impressed. And I like the way she replied to the president because she told him that there is nobody in the world who would define the way uh, you're supposed to dress or look like. So I think um, there the president lost some credit. However much was, you know, uh, bringing it in a positive way because at the end of the day, uh, also as we as Ugandans, uh, not to be biased, we have also to accept uh, positive criticism. Yeah. Because you see that... Um, as someone who is uh, crowned as uh, the queen of Africa, the entire continent is looking at you. So they're like, uh, you, you are face as a continent of 54 countries. So uh, how are you uh, portraying yourself before the entire world and before our continent? Are you wearing the pride of the African continent? Because uh, if you say you're African and you're using Indian hair, then it speaks volumes. Because going back to countries like South Africa, you see that these young African girls were demonstrating time and again because uh, they went to white uh, dominant schools and they were being expelled from school mm -hmm. for going with their Afro hair. So if such a girl uh, looks at you as the queen of Africa uh, using you know, uh, extensions or you know, um, Indian hair, as the president says, in a positive way of criticism, because uh, let's, not, let's not only be biased here, because it's always good uh, in life to accept positive criticism. That's how we can move forward as a nation and as a world. Because at times, uh, certain conversations are un uncomfortable, but we have to be uh, able to engage in such conversations. So I think um, to, to, to those girls who are in South Africa, maybe in Soweto, in Durban, or in Johannesburg, and they were expelled from schools for going with their Afro hair, and they look at... Uh, this, the, the words that were used by the president, they will be happy that the president used such words. And they would love uh, the queen, Queen Abenacho, to, to use her natural hair. But again, it goes back to the individual level. So let the queen do whatever pleases her. Mm -hmm. So no one uh, should tell me how to dress. No one should tell me what to use. I, uh, it's all about my, uh, you know. I'm going to pose this it's question to, uh, that to, makes me to happy Sarah because you know she's a woman. She's had a chance of doing. You've done, you've done um, um, extensions, or you're putting wigs and stuff and stuff like that. Do you think he was right in saying something like this? Because, as he has said, there is some semblance of truth, and we should celebrate our natural roots mm. and all that good stuff. But. I don't think it was called for at that time. But do you think there was someone say Barbara Hazel is saying actually he was right in one way or another. We should just be natural. Um, and then we also have someone saying, but Museven now is, his work is only to abuse Ugandans. That's that's the only thing he can do. So I'm gonna just disregard that. But do you think he was right to say that? Do you think he, he, he maybe he said it in a wrong way? But do you think it's something? What do you As think? the president, his statement was uncalled for. Mm. Abe natural didn't win. Because she was put on a goma, she was putting on a gomasi to identify. She did not win because she was putting on a um, back cloth that identifies Africa. She did not win because um, she was she was in back cloth or she was dr dressing as anything that makes her African. She won. Basically, what made that girl win was the project that had everything to do with helping the girl child in a trying to control early pregnancies in trying to keep the girl child in school. Mm -hmm. That's why if you looked at, she was contesting with, the, before she went to the top 30, she was with someone from Miss Spain, Johnson. and they both had to present their projects. And all the judges concurred that her project was really good. Because countrywide, worldwide, 
we are all fighting to keep the girl, the girl child in school and we are all fighting to control early pregnancies. Early pregnancies happen everywhere, even in America here. Sure. If you don't control it, you, you have these girls grow very fast. You have mm -hmm. girls getting pregnant as early as 10, 9 years. Yeah. Yesterday I was watching a program and some, some doctor was saying her youngest patient was 9 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And they, they, the person who made her pregnant was 12 years. Yeah, oh, wow. it happened here in the United States. So uh, it was very uncalled for. Just like he's not comfortable people calling him for dressing up oversized clothes that were last worn in the say, 90. Because he's literally, the way he dresses the president, he dresses, we've seen those, uh, the way he dresses, that was way back in the 60s when people had out of material to waste. Those are pictures we see coming back from the 60s. That's how we, if he's not comfortable with people calling him out on the way he dresses, I don't see, I didn't see any reason. All the contestants that were for Miss World, I am going to tell you, 100% or 99 had uh, extensions. True, that's very, that's They had clip-ons. Check all the girls, the white girls. 99% or even 100% of the white people wear clip-ons. They wear extensions, yet they already have long hair. Why do they wear extensions for volume? African hair, I'm telling you, if she went in with African hair, because our African hair, it depends on who is having it. Sometimes it's not thick enough. Sometimes it doesn't have the nice texture. Texture. You're, in the, you're, you're standing on the world platform. How would you take your kaweke to the world platform? This was, this was, this was not a traditional you know, context it where people have to showcase a, 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 a village party. It was it's not, a, not a village party. This mm. is, I'm telling you, why are white girls wearing extensions? Why? They already have long hair. But this is, this is, this is, a, this is a wide a, a world platform where so many things are considered. So his statement was completely un uncalled for. He's, he's one of the worst presidents I've seen the way he dresses. No one calls him up for that. So he should let Abenasho do. And the fact that government did not support her at all. And where you're supposed to appreciate that at least it's one of the we've just she comes she wins in the middle of the Kutesa scandal at least she makes if you google she got she yeah, adds positivity to the country exactly mm -hmm. at least she fades away a little bit the Kutesa scandal because it's all over mm -hmm. and then when she comes back you're talking about oh you shouldn't wear indian hair is that indian is that indian hair and and first of all i didn't like the way the media when this girl came back she had been on a flight for so many hours. You know how you look like when you get off a plane with Especially all the jet from China because it's just a big I know. Lay over there. You have all the jet lag. You you're tired. Your eyes are puffy. You're tired. If you've ever been on a plane, you know what your feet are swollen. You cannot even sit properly. They couldn't even support because if they had supported that she would have moved. I'm sure she moved uh, economy. She wasn't even in business class. So they would have gone in that business class or first class where she could lie and sleep and do all these things. So she was tired. And maybe this was... Uh, well, after I, I don't know if it's true, but I had like some information that uh, she was given maybe a first this is class. Maybe this is where I go wrong. Uh, first class, return, return, return ticket. Okay, if, okay. if she know. was given a first class yeah. return ticket. I don't Let's think she accept. had first class to begin with when it yeah. started. Yeah, when she was going. Yeah. And, 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 and on top of that, on top of that if you see what they went through when she was in China, she went by herself and Nanyonjo Brenda came in later, much later. So she had to go through, she was stressed. And we must be proud that she did all this by her own, by herself. Sure. She did all this by herself. And, she really answered, and I'm right telling now, you, yeah. standing on a world platform and being able to articulate yourself and answer and express yourself is very, very important. So yeah. many Ugandans would fail. Even if you had coached that girl, if she could not express herself and convince the judges, she would fail. So many people cram and fail. Because the people, the judges wanted to see emotion. They wanted to see, do you understand what you're talking about? Can you defend? If we send you to, to defend the girl child, could you? She did that very well. So for her to come back when you mm. didn't even support her, and what I see, when you Google right now, all what comes out, the president of Uganda told uh, Miss World Africa <laughs> to stop wearing Indian. Indian hair. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he's always in the news. This girl has done something. At least let's say we are ending yes, the year mm. with something good coming out of Uganda. True. We've never, we've never been recognized for beauty. 
On that note, we're going to segue into our corruption case that has been taking over Uganda lately. We do have all the things that have been happening. Uh, I'm sorry for you guys if I haven't had a chance to read all your all your comments. Uh, I do see Kathy Tendo is saying, Sarah, I love you. Um, Seven is just lost. Uh, Helen is saying, well said, Sarah. That's why I love you. They failed to support her. And kudos to our queen. Um, so many things have been happening this week. You guys, again, we're hating on Seven because he's the, he's, the, he's the one person we have to, because he's He's going to take the fall for everything pretty much in the next few months. But during earlier this week, we have the fighting of corruption. So the anti-corruption unit is led by uh, Colonel Edith Nakalema and the media raided the Wakisolan officers, which were closed on working day. Um, why should, why, why use it? Okay, why not say okay? So the corruption, the, whole, the anti-corruption uh, unit that was started earlier on this week. We want to talk about the situation and we want to find out if it's going to be, if they're starting with the anti-corruption, why are they not tackling the Sam Kutesa, the Sam Kutesa and the 70 bribe? Uh, what are they, are they going to actually even take on that case? Are they going to, given that the president is involved? He has in been the, exonerated already. Ah, you okay. need to be. So I want, I, want to, I want to find out how this case is going to go run. It is not going to end it, is, it has been solved. How if, is this solved? How no, break it down for us? If check the media, um, Kutesa has been exonerated. On what grounds? I do not know. But he's free from the scandal. That's what I read in a New Vision and the Monitor. Kutesa is free from the scandal. He's been exonerated for reasons. I, maybe he's related to the first family. Maybe they do business together. But forget about it. You're not going to hear any more about it. He's not going to be persecuted. And maybe he, when he steps into the U.S., that's when... Um, they, they will arrest him. But in Uganda, he has no case to answer. You move to something else. That's, why, that's what happens. That's what they do. You expected them to, to just drag Kutesa into all that mud. Kutesa is among the first top five when it comes to the first family. He wasn't going to get drowned into that mud. Mm. He's exonerated. He's free. Blame someone else. So this case, well, it's just going to remain in thin air? It's going to remain... In the, in, the, in the U.S., he has a case to answer. Mm. In Uganda, he's a free man. They didn't find anything wrong he did. So, <laughs> so as not, Hillary, what's, as your, as, what's, well, what's um, your take on, what's your take yes, on, on this? Sarah could be happened? right in one or the mm. other because uh, this is how we've seen our president behave. Uh, he leaves those who are corrupt to you know, be free in our country other than putting them in jail. Because uh, this case of uh, Sam Kutesa uh, taking the bribe well, while he was uh, the UN president, uh, the UN General Assembly president, uh, it, it, it put our name uh, in a very bad image before the international scene. Because being uh, the president of the United Nations General Assembly, that's a very big opportunity any country would yearn to get. Because all African countries wanted this opportunity. But they, they all lobbied for our country to take the position to be the, uh, of presidents of the UN General Assembly. Mm -hmm. And for Sam Kutesa to shame us in such a bad manner, I think it was a very bad experience. And also uh, have experience. the president Yes, because uh, if you see that uh, already, uh, the case was, the, already the case had a ruling in the US, uh, in the US federal courts, they are saying that Patrick Ho, uh, was guilty of bribing African leaders to conduct business. Because they say that he gave the president of Chad two million US dollars. He gave uh, Sam Kutais exhibit 1510 also uh, half a million US dollars. And also our president is also dragged in the same case that he, he, he allegedly got also uh, half a million US dollars. So from seven to come out to say that uh, I am you know, putting up a state house uh, and corruption unit led by Lieutenant Kano uh, Edith Nakalema. And for her, she's you know, also trying to dodge um, who is very the case of this, <laughs> of this Sam Kutesa, uh, who is, yes, as Sarah said, uh, Sam Kutesa is one of the most corrupt uh, government officials in the history of our country. Mm. Because if I give you like five names, you, of course you'll like, get uh, Sam Kutesa, you get Mama Mbabazi, you get the president himself, you get, uh, you know, Kazinda, you get Gilbert Badwaska Kenya, you get Nasasira, you get uh, Michael Mukula. All those are very crafty people. Mm. If you look at also the former uh, finance minister, Saida Bumba, very crafty. So we are saying that if, why can't Edith uh, Nakalema, Lieutenant Colonel, begin with this case of Sam Kutesa? 
Why can't she put pressure on him, maybe to step aside as we carry out an investigation? And as Sarah said, uh, the case is very clear. There is no even investigation needed because there is a ruling already in the U.S. Uh, the guy was guilty of, you know, a bribe, a, a, bri a bribery. I want to ask so both of you. So I think um, mm. we have to uh, ensure that uh, the, the, this anti-corruption thing unit uh, gives like the anti-corruption, because we have the anti-corruption court in, in Uganda. So why can they leave them do their work? Do we do have, uh, yes, the office of the DPP. Why can he do his work? We have the office of the IGG, uh, Irene Mulya Gonja. Why can't she do her, her work? And for them, you see like the raid of the Wakiso uh, land offices. Uh, it, it was just to uh, make the parliament, uh, the, I mean the public, uh, you know, think that they are working on something very sensitive, but again, We've seen such events happen uh, time and again. So for you to come and bring, uh, parade the media that is, is a raid of an office to, th to, 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 to blind Ugandans that you're working, that business no longer works. Because Ugandans want to see the big fish being indicted and convicted. If they tell you Kutesa was corrupt, begin with him. Because he's the closet, he's, he's, the, he's the closest person you have. So it's, it's very, very close from the State House, uh, State House Nakasero to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Go for him. Can't you raid the, min the Minister of Foreign Affairs and get some Kutesa from there to jail, to zero? Why is it very hard? Can't you go to uh, also uh, to the Minister of Works and get Nasasira from there, then put him in jail? So other than lying to us, why can't you go for Gilbert Wadi Wasakavu Kenya? Because he's swindled the 2007 Chogam funds. Because they told us that they're going to renovate Entebbe Airport during the Chogam time. Where did the money go? Right now, if you go to Entebbe Airport, it, it's, it's like, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's a shame to, to look at our national airport like that. So you're talking How about, about you, the you, people who swindled also the money that was meant to buy the bicycles for the LCs, LC1s, a local council? Because they told us that all the local councils are going to get, uh, you know, uh, bicycles, but the money was swindled. So where is that money? So Edith Nakalema should look in such big events, because we haven't forgotten. Because if you look at what happened in the Ministry of Public Service, so that they are working, that they indicted uh, the permanent, uh, the permanent uh, secretary of that ministry, and they are serving, they're going to serve, uh, they, 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 they're going to serve their, their punishments. Mm. But again, we see Nasasira is very free. We see Mike Mukula is very free. We see <laughs> Sam Kutesa is very free. You see, I, I, don't, mean, I don't know. Let's we have see the see, big uh, fish going to jail. That's when we shall know that, yes, this president is very serious with the issue of fighting corruption. But otherwise, they just are blinding us and they think uh, we shall take things for granted. Eric N. Amot is saying, Museven did not go to the UN General Assembly this year, possibly because there's a sealed indictment uh, against <laughs> him in New York State <laughs> of and course. our federal government. <laughs> then we also have, um, uh, I really cannot read your name on screen. Uh, Sam Kutesa has not used shillings in 20 years. He uses dollars to transact, yet he lives in Uganda. So this is my question. We have, we, we have talked about this. Sarah has mentioned it. You have mentioned it over time and time again. You're saying that all these anti-corruption agencies, IDP, IGG, uh, even the new one that just started on, um, they have not done any, like we're, we're, the, the government itself is fighting the work they're doing. And they have not moved forward in like well, the last few years. We don't see anything happening, any big cases coming out. All these big names, it, with the whole Sam Kutesa issue going on and the seven being implicated. Is there a way, is it possible for them to get outside international help to tackle a situation. No, for, for this because thing, we don't even need international because if it, <laughs> outside if it, if experts. Because for the last two years, nothing because has happened. Because everything no is very been... evident. The, the problem is one, is the leadership in our country. Because the leadership has put a system that has loopholes. So once you get rid of this leadership, mm. the regime of Mr. Museveni, then you can easily curb the issue of corruption, the, uh, the cancer of corruption in our country. So before we remove Mr. Museveni from uh, State House, there is no way we're going to fight corruption. Because Zori is, con, uh, is, Zori is you know, condoning corruption. There is no way Museven was himself is corrupt. Because we've seen him in the very, yes, a president of our nation. And you're taking a small bribe of 0.5 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. it's, it shows you how greedy these people are. They're not minding about uh, you know, the, the peasants who are in Kapuchora, in Kavala Maido, in Kapiripiriti, in Isingiro. They're they are, they are fighting so hard each and every day to just get a meal of one day. And these guys are great going for petty, petty harsh money. So for how long are we going to look at these things going on? And the parliament is very silent about it. 
Because if the Speaker of Parliament is very concerned about the issue of uh, Sam Kutesa, then she would be putting some, uh, su some orders, like uh, to those who are concerned, mm -hmm. can we by force put Sam Kutesa aside? Because it's very evident the case is there. And someone was telling you on Facebook that, yes, President Museveni failed to come for the UN General Assembly yeah. of this year. Even Sam Kutesa, as the Foreign Affairs Minister, the UN, the yes, uh, we waiting. were there waiting for them and they, they feared to come and, uh, and you know, account for their actions and atrocities of human rights. And as Sam Kutesa, the Minister of Foreign, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, he was supposed to come and you know, lobby at the international scene for different things. But again, as their foreign affairs, minister, foreign affairs ministers were busy lobbying for different things to forge solutions to the global issues, for him, he couldn't travel. Because he knows it very well that he can never come again to the, the US. Once he lands to any airport in the US, he will be uh, indicted. He knows it very well. And even M7 advises him, do not travel. And just watch that. You said Sam Kutay said it's going to take him also years to go to the UK because he knows that UK and US are allies. Uh -huh. So once he goes to the UK, they will indict him and they bring him to US so, yeah, to account for his definitely. actions. So he fears. Right now where Sam Kutesa can go is East Africa is Africa. That's where he can go. Maybe China and Russia or North Korea, that's where they can go. But when it comes to Europe, uh, those countries that are allies of the US, it's very hard for him to travel. So I think uh, the president, uh, he should just you know, uh, listen to the cry of Ugandans mm. that enough is enough for him uh, to leave office because he can't fight corruption, however much we bring different things. Because the cancer of corruption is now from top to bottom. So you can't say that you're teaching the young generation at the bottom, at the grassroots, to fight corruption. Either at the top, uh, the corruption uh, is at a very high stake. So how are you telling me that uh, the local council or uh, the defense minister in your village is going to fight corruption? yet the president is uh, being yes, corrupt. Correct. How are you telling me that the police officer is going to stop being corrupt, mm. yet uh, the, minister, the minister of finance is too corrupt? How are you going to tell me that uh, maybe uh, a tax driver is going to stop bribing a police officer? <laughs> yet for you, you're doing that. And now you see that corruption is eating up also the young generation. Because yeah. if you go to schools today, uh, you see also campaigns are being uh, commercialized that parents themselves are giving uh, their children uh, lots of monies to invest in campaigns. So a child who is in primary four wants to become a timekeeper in, in his or her school. And the parent is investing in three million Ugandan shillings to that child to become a timekeeper. Then imagine what kind of corruption is that. So this child is buying candy for her fellow peoples in primary school so they can vote for him or her to take that position of timekeeper then that's how corruption is beginning. And that's how it's circulating from primary level to secondary school to universities. Mm -hmm. Go to universities because I was the good prime minister of Macquarie University Business School. I could see how uh, campaigns were, were, being, you know, uh, were being commercialized. Mm -hmm. So the thing you see, uh, you see at the national level, that's the thing that is happening uh, today also at the grassroots. You see the, the, the president of Uganda carrying big sacks of money everywhere he's going. If he goes to Busoga in Jinja, he's taking them sacks of money. And he says, I own a treasury. If he goes to Nalukolongo to meet traders, he's going with, uh, you know, hash money. If he goes to uh, Nakasero or, or the old tax park, he's moving with money. He's corrupting Ugandans. He's tokenizing them. He's manipulating them, using them as decorations. In other words, uh, he wants to see that the country becomes dead as much as possible. So as young Ugandans, we are saying enough is enough. We can't just look on it like this. Sure. The only solution we have uh, of fighting corruption is to get rid of this regime of dictator January Kaguta M7. Then we put a system that is entailed at fighting corruption. Then we put laws in order that are going to fight corruption. Because they're, they're telling you they have the anti-corruption uh, unit. And they're telling you become a whistleblower. But do we have a law that, that protects, protects you, whistleblowers? Mm. There is no way. So today I'm going to call out someone is so corrupt. Uh, he I gave out uh, maybe like uh, he's swindled five million, uh, five, five, maybe like 50 Ugandan shillings. And tomorrow they're going to come for me. They kill me. They kill my family. So am I safe uh, to be a whistleblower? I'm not safe. So this is the problem of Mr. Museveni. There is no way, except uh, maybe those who are powerful in uh, government or ministries, like the, the, the case of uh, Pius Vigilmana, when he called out uh, you know, those uh, permanent secretaries and accountants in the ministry of, uh, the, the, in, in the office of the prime minister uh, with, with the Kazinda case of you know, corruption. So those are the few who can be protected. But as 
me the wananchi uh, who is from maybe Kapchora, who is from maybe Pakwach or uh, Idudi or Kabula Maido, I'm, I'm not going to be protected. So I would think that it's better for me to keep silent uh, to fear for my safety other than losing my life okay. because at the end of the day I, I want, I want uh, to have life. So let the parliament pass the law if they want to pass uh, corruption that I, we are going to protect uh, whoever becomes a whistleblower mm. and we know that we are safe. Let the parliament also put strict laws that once we get you, then we shall take over all your properties, we put you in, in jail, also your family has to be liable because we have to so copy lessons. Happens? You see, like China, I you can't mess it. up with the issue of corruption in China because they will go for you as an individual, they go for your family, mm. they go for your assets, each and everything. Yeah, they can close to you, they go Exactly. For. So That's gonna... how a system that is anti-corruption works. But for us telling us you're anti-corruption and you are very corrupt as a leader, then we're just wasting time to fight corruption when we still have the government in some 70. So as Ugandans, uh, those who are watching, let's keep uh, you know, opening up mindsets of different young people who mm. are in, in rural areas, who are in urban settings, to fight this regime of Mr. Museveni if we are to have uh, an effective government that is anti-corruption. All right, so this next topic goes to Sarah because uh, she's very, very passionate about it and she knows the ins and outs of how this game is operating, how whatever is going on ground. Um, earlier on this week and last week, I think, at the end of last week and this week, uh, Bobby Wine's shows were all shut down, they were all cancelled, and he's not, he's, he, you, you, all of you who know him, all of you who have heard of Bobby Wine and how he has come to be, how he has managed to get his success, know that he performs and he relies on, you know, performing as a musician first and foremost before he's uh, an MP. That's his passion. So that's how we've come to know him. But earlier on this week, all his shows were cancelled and it's a Christmas season. We all know that's where all artists make their money. Uh, but we want to know, because Sarah is so, so knowledgeable about things like this, we want to first find out, uh, you know, I want to have her answer a few questions. So Sarah, from your knowledge, of what is going on and you, you have communication with Bobby Wine and the family who is behind all these shows who's canceling all these shows and what are they do why what is the reason behind all this and what are we doing to solve it what can we do because the man needs to eat his family needs to eat right. if they if that if they're not doing it to any other person I had they I had a rumor that they boycotted Eddie Kenzo's shows but I'm not sure about it so we gotta if they're doing it to Bobby Wine, are they going to do it to other artists too? Or is, is it just Bobby Wine who's getting that special treatment? And why is that? Yeah, because it's, it's so funny when... Um, and it's a shame that um, the government has got into a stage where they do not care about Ugandans. Because uh, you're not only making Bobby Wine suffer, you're making um, Bobby Wine you're making Bobby Wine and... Um, his family and everything. Not only his uh, family. You're making Bobby Wine. You're making promoters. You're making... Uh, you're making all these other people suffer. You saw the lady who fainted. Mm. Um, she fainted when uh, her show with Bobby Wine, is it in Kapeka? Was cancelled and she... In fact, yesterday she was in Parliament. Mm. Yesterday she was in Parliament talking to the Speaker and saying that uh, she gave in her land, her house as collateral to the money lenders, knowing that after the show, after making her money, she's going to pay back the money lenders. She borrowed money from the money lenders to organize the show. That's what they do most of these uh, promoters. <laughs> she will take a loan from somewhere, knowing, because if you bring Bobby Wayne for a show, you just know. Because those are the big three artists. If you have a show and you have on Bobby Wine, Bebe Cool, or... Uh, or chameleon, chameleon, irrespective of where they're going to perform, because these are like big artists, they're legends. Mm, they'll bring that People, money back. The, the money will come back. Mm. You cannot have a show with either Bebe Cool or Chameleon and Bobby Wine, and uh, you fail to, to fill up. But uh, when, uh, when you follow up what happened in, uh, in, uh, in Ginger, the police cleared the shop very well. And before, they told the promoter, you cannot have Bobby Wine and Bebe Cool on the same show. Choose one. The promoter chose uh, Bobby, Bobby Wine, Wine and took off Bebe Cool. And uh, the show was clear because there were other performers. There was Shiba and the rest. The show was clear. Bobby Wine appears in Ginger because um, these artists are paid before the show. Or even a little balance is left until when they appear. But I guess to these big artists now, you pay them. If they don't perform, they, they return your money. So... I didn't know, because the show in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Ginger, they were told, 
the show will go on, but Bobby Wine cannot perform. But why is that? Because it's not no, going the, to be the, from, from what I'm getting is um, um, this, they are getting orders from above, from the president, and he's so intimidated that uh, Bobby Wine is gaining a lot of popularity through his music, mm -hmm. which I don't understand because he's been performing for the last 10, 15 years. He is not popular today. Bobby Wine, if you go deep in the village, the kids know Bobby Wine. If you go in the rural remote of Uganda, they know Bobby Wine because he has performed in those areas before. Mm -hmm. So I did not understand why he said he's gaining popularity from his music, of which popularity he already has. And maybe he's really scared that this time Bobby Wine, before he was just Bobby Wine singing, and now he's, this time he's wearing another persona, Bobby Wine, who is maybe more interested in his, his feet. So people are looking at him as Bobby Wine, who is more interested in, a, who is a politician a now, politician. who is uh, likely to bring change because he appeals to so many young people of the young age. But at the same time, so this is because if you clear a show and then you say Bobby Wine cannot perform on the show, then you're telling us this is not, even the police, if you listen, if you listen to Bobby Wine when in one of the interviews, they went to the police headquarters. And they were told, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do. These are orders from above. But uh, this is one way. You know, some of these leaders are really, I don't even understand. I think, I don't know what advises Museveni. <laughs> and, I've, and I've said that so many times. Because I do not know why the persecution is so much on uh, Bobby Wine. Hotel Equatorial, that, that entire complex of Equatorial belongs to Dr. Besiji. It has never been shut down. Mm. That used to be Hotel Equatorial. It was renovated. Now it's uh, a shopping mall. It is fully in operation. It b belongs to Dr. Besiji. It has never been stopped. And Besiji has mm. been the number one opposition leader for, uh, you know, and fighting against Museveni for a very long time. Almost the same time he has been ruling. So. Yeah. Exactly. And to, but, add, to add on that also, Besiji has also gas stations. No, no. <laughs> Look at Nsambia. As you're going to Nsambia, sharing hall, there's uh, that petrol station right there. I think it's Shell or Total. Yeah. Total, Total. Total. It belongs to Dr. Besige. It has never been stopped from fueling people's cars and so many numerous businesses. So Besige has been over 10 years fighting against Dr. Museveni in a very nasty, terrible way. He has been caught, taken to prison, um, house in prison, but his businesses have been left to function. On that so, note, I want to, but, but because... I want to see how different it is because BSJ has never had what Bobby Wine has. Bobby Wine has the power of social media behind him. No, but uh, no, what but I don't. Why? Because he can garner the support of a nation, even nations out, outside. Bobby, so I don't think BSJ had the same. BSJ is on social media as well. These are just double but no, standards. No, no, and and, and I'm telling you, don't blame people mm. when they start. I'm sorry to say, when they start choosing, when they start saying BSJ works from seven and all that. Yeah. Maybe it comes from. I'm telling you. Equatorial, Hotel Equatorial, that's a big complex. Shops and all that, it's functional. And I'm telling you, if Museveni has been so much badly robbed by BCJ, mm. he would have closed up that thing long time ago. If you closed up Greenland Bank, Greenland Bank was helping so many farmers, so many people who were dependent on Greenland Bank. It was shut down just in a second. What's a, what about a shutting down a mall and tenants move out? So I don't understand the double standards. Where are the people who fight you for the same thing? Their businesses can fully operate. Mm. And then some people can only even uh, pr practice or do their businesses. Just, and, and they are all in the same arena, fighting to take over the presidential seat. But uh, at the same time, the president, I don't know why he's so, because Bobo doesn't have guns. He's just using his voice. I do not know why so much is intimidated. Because you see, sometimes I see this in leaders. Sometimes they, they make us who spectate and watch from the sidelines to believe. Now we believe Bobby Wine is more powerful than even what we thought. Because when you see a leader who has been in power for 32 years panicking to this extent, he cannot perform, <laughs> he cannot do this, he cannot do this. And I've, st I've also had statements made by opposition leaders. He's tribalistic. He's using tribal. I'm like, why are people scared? Because all of you are looking for the same thing you want to, to throw on the seven. But again, the government, as much as they are selfish, we understand, they should not, affecting Bobby Wine, you don't affect Bobby Wine as an individual. Yeah. 
I, I saw what happened to Zina. Uh, there was uh, there was a show by uh, by by Galaxy. It was supposed to be in a. It was supposed to be in One Love Beach. They have the Zina Festival. The police refused to clear the show just because it was going to happen at One Love Beach, uh, because it belongs to Bobby Wine. Mm. But as much as you think you're making Bobby Wine poor, but you're affecting. Do you know how many people come and sell mochomo? Do you know people who come and sell gum? People who come and sell t-shirts? You're mm, affecting okay. so many people, yet you claim you're fighting unemployment. You affecting Bobby Wine. You are affecting Nubian Lee, who sings with him. You are affect, you're affecting the backup musicians. You are affecting the guys who the drama. The this by the let me tell you one thing. The, the musicians, artists contribute. I would say maybe thirty or forty percent to the economy. That's they right. help the economy so much, yeah. so much, so much. They make money in. They help money circulate in so many ways. This is a festive season. If it wasn't for people in entertainment, how much would you do? People live. Be, people like, would stay home because they're. No, you know? let's let's be be honest. You have people who have traveled from America to Uganda to go and have fun. Where are they going? Do you think they are going to go to and see gorillas? And are they going to go and see wildlife? But me, I'm going to go see wildlife. No, no, but you are one. Majority of Ugandans, <laughs> majority of Ugandans are going back to Kampala to party. They are going to be in governor. They are going to be in all these shows. They are going to Kampala to have fun. Hawk these bars. They are going to follow these artists wherever they are going to perform. That's and that's what they are going to do. So if you are affecting just one artist because he has a political opinion, then and Ugandans must be vigilant because tomorrow you are a lawyer and you're maybe handling cases that have to do with the, the government mm. and winning these cases. You're going to be bad from practicing law just because you're affecting government. You're winning cases against them. If you're a consultant, you're going to be affected. And, and this is not a big, a good, a good, by the way, this is not a good precedent for, for members of parliament. Because as member of parliament, you, you go to parliament to serve people and uh, every money you earn as a member of parliament, the 25 million they earn is not supposed to be their salary. Mm -hmm. It is money supposed to do work in their constituencies. So in other words, what are you trying to show that uh, people can still, because you still have MPs that have no any other job, and they are feeding on, the, on this 25 million and doing nothing in their constituencies. Yeah, many. <laughs> so stopping Bobby Wine to do his other uh, uh, profession, mm -hmm. You are as if telling him to feed on the 25 million he gets on a monthly basis. So that means he cannot do any other duties in his constituency. So in other words, in other, I do not know who really spoke in seven into this, but it is so gullible. It, is, it doesn't make sense. It, is, it doesn't come, you know, if you want to control, because I've seen uh, when, um, when, uh, when the speaker raised this, when Bob Wine raised this to the floor of parliament, they called up um, the minister for security, that was Tumwene. And the best they could say that uh, bo uh, this is an occupational hazard. <laughs> Literally up to this time, I'm trying to digest and understand what he meant. Did he mean that Bobby Wine is a political, is, uh, is a threat? Did he mean that he's a threat to the country? That uh, if he performs, maybe terrorists are going to attack? I didn't totally understand. Occupational hazard, I, up to this time, I'm still trying to, to think further to see what exactly he meant. What did he when mean? they called out Tunkana Ruguna, that's the prime minister, he dodged, mm. he, he dodged the first session. Then the next day, he, had, uh, he brought a word to the speaker that uh, the Minister Jeju Odong had to explain. Minister Jeju Odong, when he, came, uh, when he came onto the floor, he had totally nothing to say. Until when the member of parliament from the ruling party and opposition had to raise up and say, oh no, this is not right. And then from what we had last was uh, the, minister and, um, the minister and the speaker and also it took promoters because promoters have invested money. They're because they're money what now. people don't understand, promoters, Bobby Wine does not own any of those shows he's going to perform on. Bobby Wine, his shows are already bought. You see, the, you see what happened with Busabala, the... The one love concert, Charing. Charing. Charing had been bought off long time ago. He had already even eaten the money. Charing did not belong to Bobby Wine. Charing did not. The Saba Saba. The tickets were already, we were already paid. The Saba Saba concert did not belong to, mm. did not belong to Chameleon. These promoters pay you off. If the show, the promoters sit down, these are big artists and they say, I'm paying you 300 million. And the promoter pays maybe down payment 150 million. Or 200 million and they have to give you the 100 million 
when you perform. Even before you step on the show, the money must be paid. So these shows, Museveni thinks he's hurting Bobby Wine, but he's not. Because Bobby Wine has already been paid for these shows. You're hurting, that's why the promoters had to go to parliament. Because this is hurting their business. By the time the promoter sits down and starts uh, um, uh, advertising for a show, he has already he has paid for this. A lot of These big artists are not treated like these upcoming musicians. These upcoming musicians, they can only even be paid on that same day. The big artists are already, the, all their shows are already bought. You see Bobby Wayne is going to be Busa, on Busabala 26. You think you're affecting Bobby Wayne's business. Bobby Wayne was paid a long time ago and he reinvested the money. He doesn't have the money. So you're, you're making, first of mm. all, the promoter, as much as Bobby Wayne has to pay back the money, he, pay, he, paid, he was paid by the promoter. You're making the promoter. He has not made any profit. He's only going to be paid the money put in, but he has lost money in advertisement. He has lost money putting up banners, stages, and all that. So they, whoever is advi advising the president, they need to tell him, they need to really be smart. He needs a musician, or he needs someone like, maybe someone who is in the field of, of entertainment, to explain to him that you're thinking you, you're, you think you're hurting Bobby Wine, but you're but not. You're hurting the people. Oh, you see, Bobby Wine is going to perform in um, Nkuka. He's already among the artists that are going to perform in Nkuka. But why you see right now people like Abitex fighting? Abitex has already paid Bobby Wine. Mm. Abitex owns the show. He has already paid Bobby Wine. So Bobby Wine not going for Nkuka, you're making Abitex lose, oh, you know what? Lose on profits. Because right now, Abitex, right now if you see, if Bobby Wine is stopped in performing in Lubiri, in, uh, in Nkuka, in, uh, what's, what's that place? Is it Lubiri? Yeah. There are people, you know Nkuka brings it. I'll tell you this, my brother, stays in Masaka, but every year, my brother stays in Mitiana, but every year he has to be on Nkuka. I tell you, how do you do it? He lives, basically, that's his major, major event, because they like it, you know, they like it when the Kabaka is opening the new year, mm. you know, all that. So Abitex has already put in money, maybe he has already paid Bobby Wine lots of money, 30, 40 million, 50 million. So if you're thinking you're affecting Bobby Wine, you're affecting Abitex. For people to know that Bobby Wine is gonna, not going to be on that show, people who have, would have moved from Masaka, where they are Antone, deep down in the village, just because they love Bobby Wine. But Abitex is losing on revenue. But Abitex pays taxes. All these shows pay money. They pay taxes. They pay for the venue. Abit Nkuka does not happen in... Uh, happen, yeah. Nkuka, the organizer of Nkuka has to pay money for the venue to organize the Nkuka in, uh, in Ubiri. Mm. So they need someone who understands the, the gist of the business and deeper part of it. Need to sit down with the, the big wings and Museveni and tell him, you, you are running a country for 32 years where there is massive better. levels of unemployment. So you're thinking you're stifling Bobby Wine and his, and his profession. You are affecting so many people because Bobby Wine was already paid. When I, had, when I got to know the amount of money Bobby Wine was paid for Charlinga, I, I'm telling you, if it had, it had not happened, the promoter would have died. The promoter would have died. He paid lots of money, and he expected to get a profit. I'm so lucky, I'm so happy that you know he had a mammoth of people, you know, flooding Busabara. But the promoter put in a lot of money. Money, if, had, if, it had if that show had no, no, if that show had not happened at any one point in time, the guy would have died. He put in, a, he paid Bobby Wine a lot of money. So you're not affecting Bobby Wine. Because Bobby Wine, the moment a show goes on air that this concert, Bobby Wine is going to be there, he's already been paid. Because don't expect any promoter to advertise him before sitting down with his managers and paying him. No you're affecting these promoters. You're affecting all these other small, small people who are involved in these businesses. You're affecting a guy in, in a... In NASA Road, who, who does printing of the posters? You are affecting the small guy who has put up the posters. Mm. You are affecting someone who is going to sell queuing gum. You are affecting all someone who is going to sell all the border border riders who are going to ride people for those shows. You are affecting the beer companies that have to sell booths. You are affecting radios, TV stations that have to advertise. You are affecting everyone. You're drowning the economy just because of your selfish little political ambitions. Yes, and uh, yeah, so uh, to add briefly something like a minute uh, to what Sarah said, I think with this issue, uh, we, we see uh, the, the type of politics uh, our institutions are playing. Because if you see uh, the police, uh, they are giving totally different uh, position. 
Then when it goes to also the Minister of Internal Affairs led by uh, Minister uh, J.J. Odong, yeah. is also giving a different position. Now it goes to the Prime Minister of Uganda, the head of government business, is also trying uh, to dodge around and give a different, uh, a different position on this. But as Bobby Wine has said uh, in one of his recent uh, interviews, because uh, I heard him saying that uh, they think they know me, but they don't know me. So that alone uh, tells us uh, something very strong about uh, the resilience of Bobby Wine uh, when it comes to the issue of uh, rescuing us, our, our country from this tyrant leader, uh, <laughs> the, um, President Museveni. He has told uh, them that um, however much they do each and everything possible, I'm a ghetto person. I grew up from the, from the, from the ghetto. He never so had. I can survive without money. If you think you're going to oppress me like this financially, I can live without money. And that speaks volumes. It shows you someone who is, uh, has given it up uh, like on each and everything to ensure that they fight uh, for their country. So I think uh, Bobby Wine is giving us a very great example and we should keep fighting on. Because ask yourself a question like, uh, where was the police to block Bobby Wine? from performing at the end of year part of the parliament. Exactly. They were nowhere to be seen, but they left him uh, perform uh, before uh, uh, the parliamentarians. And so, you and see again, the funny thing? Mm -hmm. I saw those in opposition, because music doesn't discriminate. Exactly. I saw the people who danced most at the NRM. I yeah. saw I saw the N, you, you saw the N, he's a member of parliament, yeah, going back at Chini. Yeah. <laughs> he was going back at Chini. Music doesn't discriminate. In fact, in fact it makes people, it eases people, it makes people take away their stress. Mm -hmm. yes. It makes, yeah. yes, music is like, I mean, a, we'll, is, we'll, is like, is like a universal language. I'm and again, it's, 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 yeah, just, just before you, being, uh, you, you just come in, uh, moderator, you see, uh, so, uh, Sarah was telling us about uh, the issue of Bobby Wine performing at the Lovidi on the 31st of uh, this okay. month, December. So ask yourself a question. Do you think the police can block Bobby Wine from going to perform in the Lovidi? It's very hard. They will not. They can't block him. Unless when this government has forgotten the history of the 1996 Uganda crisis. Because mm. those are the events that the government wants again to, to occur. That's and how I'm, things and I'm, began. This is what I'm hoping. So I'm if hoping they, Bobby mm -hmm. Wine can really, really smuggle himself into Luvidi. Mm -hmm. And I see the police with their member and all that craziness <laughs> enter Luvidi to start causing commission. Yes, they, 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 they can't do such a thing yes, because yes, once they attack right. him, then you're going to remind us uh, that they will get the issue, they will get a crisis. Mm. You're going to remind us also the Kasese crisis. You remind <laughs> us the Uganda uh, crisis of 1996. So they will be repeating the same events in 2018. And we don't want to end a year in a bad way. So I think uh, as the police, uh, very they should leave Bobby Wine to perform, you know, uh, to perform at his concerts. Because yes, Bobby Wine is a threat. They, they should know Bobby Wine is a, th is a threat. However much they disguise, anyhow, mm. if uh, to me uh, the minister comes out and says Bobby Wine is an occupational hazard, I can tell you, uh, Honorable Tumwine, uh, Bobby Wine is a hurricane. He is not going to give up. Until we rescue our country from this tyrant government, we shall not give up. And Bobby Wine is standing with all Ugandans, he's standing on his uh, position. He is going to die fighting or he'll die trying. He <laughs> so, has told us this and we are going to support him. I'm going to read some of these comments that are right here online before we, we, we head off. We do have, um, uh, we have Big Savia saying, Big Savia, thank you so much. You're always online, always promoting, always uh, commenting and giving me advice on how the show should run. Thank you so, so much for being, always being on the show and, and watching it. You're saying the problem, Bobby already showed the interest for his seat. I mean, seventy seat. That's why all this is happening, to scare away this Charenga man. Uh, the true fact is we need change. Museveni must go. Enough is enough. And then we also have um, Savula, Savula to gain it. Sarah Joy. Uh, then we also have uh, Banaga, I wish you would change your name because I cannot pronounce it online. It's such a... <laughs> you're saying you are affecting us who are single and going to every Buru to look for our future wives. <laughs> so <laughs> that's... So, so many reasons. For so fun. many reasons. Right. People have so many reasons. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. Ugandans at the stage where Uganda is right now, people don't go out because they have money. People go out to, look, mm. to release their stress levels. Yeah. Exactly. Because That's true. the thing people don't understand, I see so many people saying, you're saying Ugandans are broke, but they party every night. The type of depression that Ugandans have, 
you need to be out Somewhere. to ease your depression. You're going to find, if you go and, and ask the local women, they're going to say, my husband did not buy food here, but he comes back drunk. What do you want him to do? Mm. The guy is going to sit out in a bar, take a beer, just to distract himself. People, people are so depressed that they look for different ways to distract right. themselves. So and people, beer is on credit nowadays, because you will people, go and drink up a beer when you don't have people money. Don't <laughs> hang out, people don't hang out in bars because they have money. Mm. People don't go out for these entertainment places. You, I'll give you an example. You see, you live in America. There are so many job opportunities. Have you seen the rate at which people party and people work? People don't go out. People don't party. Unless it's summer and people have to enjoy the good weather. But, sorry, but we are in winter right now. Everyone work home, work home. People are working. Because literally, and the laws, the way the laws are, are formulated. Here, nightclubs in different places, they close at 2. Massachusetts nightclubs close at 1. Yeah. So if you're going to go out at 10, and at one you have to go home so that means you're gonna be out for two or three hours so why even bother go out but in uganda people party from the beginning of the night to 6 a.m in the morning and and sometimes sometimes i've had i have people in uganda i question but in before i used to question them and say but why don't you work until when someone sat me down and said I really, really want to work. Really, that's but that. I that's can't. that. Because everyone yeah. must they have that passion to work. Exactly. You see someone who went to school and you see them cutting fruit to go sell on a, a taxi. And uh, someone really was, want to work someone was always asking me for money. And then one time I got so mad and I'm like, man, I'm tired of you asking me for money. And I was telling my brother, why can't you work? And he said to me, sister, I really want to work. You know how I'm energetic I am. He's only, he's only 22 and he's our last born. I really, really want to work, but man, I can't find a job. He told me, do you know what it means to wake up early in the morning you, and knowing very well you have the energy, but you have nowhere to go to? Mm -hmm. you, have, you, you think, okay, what am I going to do? Apart from going out and roaming and walking around and seeing friends, you have no job to go to. Do you know what it means to wake up in the morning? You have the degree, you have the papers, but you've looked for jobs everywhere and failed to find one. He made, literally, he spoke for like 10 minutes until when it sank into my head and I stopped torturing him of, you know what, you don't want to work. He said, fine, get me a job and you see if I won't work. So that's, that's what is happening with so many Ugandan youth. They really want to work. They have, they the, have the energy, the they have the zeal. They're still young. They're still in the vibrant years. I'm telling you here, I, I work like crazy. Um, I work, I don't want to stop. When I start working, I'm in the mood of working. But uh, if you take it back on the side, mm. people really want to work. But uh, at the same time, I understand having the energy and zeal of wanting to work. But you have no job to do. No opportunity so people to do resort to party. People, don't, people are not all in these bars because they have money. None of them have money. No, most of these girls That's go true. out hoping to find Someone Hillary. Has money. To buy her drink, to give her money for a border border back home. And that's it. All she had is 1,000 shillings to take her on a border border and throw her in a happening place. Boom. <laughs> and then that she starts so looking for a hundred euros. If I can get one to buy me beer, one for transport back home, one for lunch tomorrow. And don't blame them. Yeah. They in, 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 in 2010, I think, we are, we uh, know they, they told me that it was a report finish. that came out no, saying no, no, that no, Uganda gonna is I'm going to cut you off because we guys, <laughs> we have taken a lot of time. We've taken a lot of your time, guys. Uh, thank you guys for always tuning in. All the guys who have commented, I, if I've not read your comments, I do apologize. Hillary and Sarah Joy will go back and answer you guys. Personally, she has already answered a few of you guys. Uh, and Hillary is going to go back and reply to all of you guys who are inquiring about certain topics, certain things, and certain uh, things you want to clarify or cleared up but i want to thank you guys for continuing to support us all throughout we're going to be back in the next few weeks again you will see someone new because i'll be taking some time off to go back to uganda we do have a few interviews that are scheduled there so if you're in uganda and you see me around please don't hesitate to say hello and let's have a quick conversation uh i will be in uganda 26 onwards to the new year so i hope to see you guys soon and so you'll be seeing someone else taking over the show for the next couple of weeks love on him teach him the ropes you know uh, don't be shy about asking all these questions harass him if you have to because he needs to like, get all these things correct but he's passionate about the show passionate about you guys and politics and he's willing to see uh, that your questions are answered all these topics are talked about I do want to leave one topic that I want the two of these guys to talk about and our com oncoming uh, host new moderator who's going to be coming on we do have the situation of uh, 
as I was mentioning to my producer, there's a documentary that just came out that Zambia has, has become the first Chinese colony. It has, it has literally become, moderated, it has become the first Chinese colony. How they have done that, they have managed to become totally indebted to China, where China gave them all these resources, all these uh, over 60 billion something dollars, and they have failed to pay it back. And what China does, China, you know, they, you know, buy a few things that are important to the country. They invest in, in uh, uh, electrical corporations. They invest in places here and there where they will have total ownership. So it's a documentary we're going to keep tr talking about the next few weeks because it affects Uganda so much, given that we have racked up a very, very huge debt. Moderator, before you hang up, before allow me, this is burning me. Allow me, <laughs> allow me, allow me to say this before you hang up. Okay. I have seen the minister mm. saying Ugandans are going to start learning Chinese. Yeah, that's... Uganda okay. has over 40 million people. Mm. China has more interest in Uganda. So let Chinese learn Luganda or learn English. Because you're not going to just throw... Because all this is done in a very selfish way. Yeah, Why are you torturing? Ugandan kids do not, cannot even speak English to sell themselves to the rest of the bigger part of the world. And then you want them to start learning Chinese because Chinese have interest in Uganda. Mm. And I was watching on the news the other day, the, 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 the fish, we are now importing fish from China, but it does not meet the standards of, of uh, it has toxins in it. It has lead, it has all the toxins. I was watching a documentary by BBC of the fish that is imported from China, and it is plastic. They had gone to downtown in the stores, in the markets, and uh, someone bought fish and was demonstrating how, and the waiter went and washed off the, the, the first skin of the fish, and it is completely plastic, and they put it on fire, and it burnt so badly. So China is, you are going to get, I'm telling you, we've seen cancer. Cancer is the biggest problem of the Western world, mainly because of them eating a lot of processed foods. You have kids, before they have come mm. out of the womb, they have cancer. Because in the Western world, HIV is not an issue. It is cancer. But you're going to have so much cancer in African countries just because the Chinese are coming in. And on top of that, they are going to leave you cancer, but they are coming in forcing, forcefully wanting you to speak Chinese uh, in the 21st century. <laughs> ching, ching, ching. <laughs> this will be a conversation for another day. Let me say this will be a conversation uh, for another day. Hillary, you're not going the, to the Chinese have one saying in business. Mm. They say that you either go to China or China. That's their Let them learn. Saying. Let them learn. You either they go to China Uganda. or China. And, and now you see uh, Chinese telling us to learn uh, Chinese. That's what we call soft power. So they're taking, Af they're taking on Africa through soft power. So they tell you to learn their language. Yeah. Uh, and they've also brought CCTV. So you're watching their television in Chinese. And they're also giving us scholarships to go to China and learn the language. But at the end, at the end of the day, for me, I think, uh, because where the world is going, we're in a complex world. So it's very good and ad it's advantageous to know more than two or three international languages. Because look at Ugandans today, they're going to China for business. So if you can't express yourself in Chinese, if you can't transact any uh, business deal with Chinese in China, in Guangzhou, Shanghai, or Beijing, then it's going to be very hard for you and very expensive for you to go to China and buy uh, you know, uh, merchandise. Yes, you. otherwise you're going to, 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 to hire an interpreter who is going to charge you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But again, if you go to China while being able to speak Chinese, I think it will ease the transactions. You see, I don't business. have any problem with that. But yes. the, 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 the agenda, the intentions are wrong. We're going to keep this conversation okay. for another day. I'm gonna, <laughs> their intentions are wrong. Sarah, I'm gonna, okay, so the, wait, the, the, wait for see, another we, show. We, wait we, for another show. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I can, when they get heated, I can't control them. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please, 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 this is a topic that we need to talk about wherever you're watching us from. You've had the news, you've had the rumors, you've seen, you've read the bulletins, and I don't think, I don't think the European world is going to keep silent on this because this, this literally leads us to another war because I don't think Europe will be silent when they see uh, China. They should be fine. Colonize. Since we speak English and French, they ca they let, them let us if also learn they Chinese. Still, if they, <laughs> no, they Their intentions are wrong. Their intentions are wrong. They want to colonize Uganda. Uganda should not go back under no, the rule of the colonizer. You see, even, Uganda even in the should US, not be I am going to shut down this show because it doesn't Very like many it's American go. students are going to China to learn the language. It is okay. <laughs> Very, <laughs> the intentions are wrong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the love uh, for that. We wish you guys a very, 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 very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays from wherever you're watching us from. It's 
been a quite a, a good ride when we started the show. It started mid summer, but thank you guys for you know seeing us through all the way through the end of the year. 2019 is going to be bigger and better and just majorly awesome. So you guys tune in. So many shows are going to be happening on Life MTV and Campfire TV as well. Uh, so you guys keep tuning, keep tuning in, keep showing us love. Follow the page. Go to Life MTV Live. Go and you know press on that little thumbs up, and then also just follow the follow the Campfire Talk Show. It's another page on Facebook. Be sure to follow Sarah Bakanasa on her page. Hillary uh, also has a page on Facebook, and I do have a page, a page on Facebook, Alex Nakato. So just be sure to tune in and follow all the all of us for upcoming topics and and anything that's coming in the new year. So I've been your host, Alex, with the mostest. I wish you a lovely, lovely holiday. Be safe. Bye. Have a good day.